If you were on TikTok a couple of weeks ago, you might have seen this video. And this video is pretty obviously not actually tech billionaires singing along to a TikTok audio. It's actually my friend Christina singing along to a TikTok audio. And the way that Christina made this video was by using deepfake technology to transpose her facial expressions onto some famous photos of tech billionaires. So it looks like they're singing along to an audio, but it's actually her that's singing along, but her face using this technology is controlling their face. And this video went pretty viral to like seven and a half million views on TikTok at the time that I'm recording this. And the comments are full of people pointing out potential unethical uses of this technology, right? Because if you can make a famous person look like they're saying anything, well, that kind of opens the floodgates. So we're gonna look at this technology and the ethical concerns that it brings about and how to circumvent them. And we're gonna talk to Christina about all these things and what it was like going viral with a deep fake. But first, I'd like to thank Codecademy for sponsoring this video. Codecademy is a great platform for learning how to code with over 45 million members. Their catalog covers languages from Python to C++, and they have courses to help you learn web development, data science, and so much more. I want to highlight one course in particular, Introduction to Machine Learning in Python where they walk you through core concepts in machine learning and help you through implementing them in code. What I really like about this approach is that Codecademy's online platform cuts out a lot of the annoying parts of other tutorials, setting up virtual environments, installing libraries, and so on. By cutting out these bottlenecks, you're really able to focus on learning the concepts and implementing them, not setting up your computer to be able to run your code. This fall, Codecademy wants to support students in the transition to online learning. So for the first time, they're offering a student pro membership where you can get full access to the Codecademy Pro plan for 35% off. This will get you access to courses like the Introduction to Machine Learning course I talked about, as well as to resources like their Digital Student Center. If you're interested in this, I definitely recommend that you check out the link in my description where you can sign up for a pro membership and get started on your journey of learning with Codecademy. So what are exactly deep fakes and how do you make them? Well, let's say you have a video like this. I am a completely real person and you have a photo like this then using some deep learning techniques, you can combine the two and transpose the facial expressions from the video onto the photo. I am a completely real person. I am a completely real person. I am a completely real person. This technology allows you to make pretty realistic synthetic faces through which you can make anyone say almost anything. And this is a little bit scary, right? Because people tend to see videos as, as close to sources of truth. If you see a video of someone saying something, you're not really inclined to believe that maybe it's been manufactured or edited in some way, in the way that you would if you saw, say, a, a clearly photoshopped image. Photoshopping video like this has kind of been something limited to professional production studios with million dollar budgets, at least until the last few years when this deepfake technology has really proliferated. And most people find this really creepy, right? And, and you can understand why because it's not hard to imagine some really unethical uses of this technology. You know, deep faking a uh, celebrity or, you know, your personal enemies' faces onto compromising bodies, you know, however that may be, is a really good way to defame them by spreading that on social media. And if people can't tell if it's real or fake, and they're inclined to believe that it's real, well, then you've got massive disinformation circulating. And already, deepfaking authority figures has become a favorite tool of scammers. There are such things as audio deepfakes, although they are more difficult to pull off than these visual deepfakes that you're seeing from Christina and me, which 
is pretty easy to set up and they don't look super photorealistic. You can pretty much tell that they're fake. It, it doesn't look great, but there are better ones. And, and audio deepfakes are really scary because uh, if you get a phone call from someone and you recognize their voice or you hear an audio recording of someone and you recognize their voice, there's not a whole lot of information there for you to determine whether it's real or whether it's fake. In fact, in 2016, Adobe showed off software that they had developed called Adobe Voco, which basically allows you to take 20 minutes of recorded voice data from anyone and then produce arbitrary speech that sounds like that person. Now, they never released this because of some ethical concerns. It was really just a research project, but the technology is there and it's being used in commercial text-to-speech applications today. And you can imagine that the combination of these technologies is pretty scary, right? If someone could generate arbitrary text that sounds like you, if there's only 20 minutes of recording of you, which for people like me, there obviously is. So it looks like you and it sounds like you and, well, what is there to separate from it actually being a recording of you? Are people actually gonna believe you when you say that it's a deep fake? Is it gonna matter if it's a deep fake, if most people believe it? But there are ethical uses of this technology, specifically in entertainment, right? Suddenly, you don't need to have a Hollywood level budget in order to have photorealistic fictional characters that are computer generated. And, and this really opens up a whole new world of media creation. And not to mention, we have videos like Christina's, which are obvious satires and are fun and playful. And I wanted to talk to Christina about this because I think she's someone who has thought very deeply about deepfakes and has some interesting insights. So I interviewed her. I like to compare it to how we are when we read stuff online. I think I read everything with a grain of salt on the internet. I think you do too. And I think that's because we've read so many blatant lies on the internet and jokes and whatnot. And so I think if people are exposed to a lot of this technology and they realize how realistic it is through satire rather than a lot of like malicious videos, then whenever the bad videos do come up, they will already be ready to be like, okay, maybe, maybe this isn't real. Maybe I'm already skeptical. And if it's like, if there's already a blanket ban and you're not seeing the satire, you're not seeing how it, like the technology is here, then I think if you saw a bad video, then you might be, you might believe it because you haven't been conditioned to be like, oh, this technology exists. So I think what Christine is doing is actually really smart. By exposing people to benign, fun uses of deepfake technology, whether that be through, you know, face swap filters on popular social media apps or through TikToks and videos like hers, and I guess like the ones that I've been doing in this video, you let people know that video is not really a source of truth. You get people to think a little bit more critically about what they're seeing. You know, up until this point, we've been able to rely on video and audio as relative sources of truth. They've been really hard to fake. We're now moving towards a world where this is just not true. We have fake media of all kinds, texts, images, video, audio, and we'll have to think really critically about the source and the context and all of these other things which inform us whether or not a piece of media is real or fake. But what about when we need to trust media for applications like insurance claims, where fraud is of huge potential? Well, one of the ways in which this can be done is by building new forms of media, which are much, much harder to fake. So if you build proprietary media sources with a bunch of metadata included in them, and then you use artificial intelligence to validate that metadata, and you run it against some checks like, does this look like it's a picture of a screen? Does this look like other pictures online? And so on and so forth. And then you build some network to validate these images at the time that they were created, whether that's a decentralized network on blockchain or a centralized network through some company, then you're able to create more trusted media. And though it can still hypothetically and you know, technologically, it's feasible to fake these images, it becomes a lot harder. Ultimately, it's really hard to say how deepfakes are going to affect media and how this will continue to evolve. It seems like it could go in a variety of directions. It could be completely benign and the technology is only used for entertainment purposes, or it's very possible that tomorrow we see a very convincing deepfake of a very powerful person doing something very compromising, and there's a huge controversy surrounding it. It's really hard to say what's going to happen. But I think it's really important that we're aware of what the technology can do, and most importantly, that we don't treat videos and audio as sources of truth on their own. 
that we think critically and go a step deeper, look for the context, look for who took the video, where they took it, and what other people are saying about it before we accept it as truth. I have no idea how this is going to evolve, but I'm keeping an eye on the technology because I recognize that it could be dangerous, and I recommend that you do too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope, uh, I hope it was eye-opening in some way. And I'd like to thank Christina a ton for helping out with this video and for inspiring it in many ways. So she's at Christina Computes on TikTok and on Instagram. Really smart person, really funny person, makes a bunch of relatable computer science content. She's also brilliant. So I highly recommend you go follow her if you're interested. Um, and if you wanna follow me, I'm here, you can subscribe. I really appreciate it. It, it helps the channel a ton. I'm also on Instagram at the John Fish, but yeah. Thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I really hope you enjoyed. I'll see you again soon.